All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you all for joining us this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, for those of you um, who are new and joining us um, after Tuesday night's engagement session, welcome. Um, welcome to the Neighborhood Roundtable. This is the January Neighborhood Roundtable for uh, New City and Back of the Yards. Um, before we get started, um, we'll go through just really quickly the ground rules for this meeting. Um, as always, please stay muted while others are speaking. Um, please raise your hand to speak. Um, feel free to use the chat and the Q&A features on Zoom. Um, and this meeting is being recorded um, and it will be posted within one week. Um, so we have a pretty full agenda this morning. We're also joined by a couple of our partners um, from Main Street America and uh, the city's Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. Um, so I wanna give plenty of time for both of them to um, kind of present to you um, and talk about how their work um, um, sort of dovetails with Invest Southwest um, in New City and Back of the Yards. Um, but before we get to them, I did think it was um, kind of worthwhile to just take a moment um, and, and give a really quick um, recap of Tuesday night's engagement session. Um, these are some of the things that we heard at the engagement session, um, you know, in addition to some of the, in, the initiatives that we're already working on um, in Invest Southwest, there's a need for more green space in the community. Um, not just sort of public open space like plazas and things like that, but actual green green space. Um, the community is interested in being involved in the site selection around the library. So DPD has committed to um, following up with the Chicago, Chicago Public Libraries um, to talk to them about how the community might be involved and engaged um, in their process. Um, we heard a lot of concerns around parking um, with new development in the neighborhood. And so that's something that I think we need to look to address. Um, we heard a lot of comments about community wealth building and also concerns around gentrification, displacement, and increased taxes. Um, I think these are things that we're going to have to continue to address and talk about um, as we move forward this year um, in Invest Southwest. Um, and then just in, uh, you know, calls for greater community involvement. And I think that's something too that we hear loud and clear. I think you know, we continue um, to try and find ways to engage the community in creative ways, um, especially in COVID-19 when we can't really meet in person um, like we would like to. Um, and so these are all things that I think you know, that we heard um, Tuesday night. Um, I think they're things um, that we need to be aware of. We need to continue to discuss um, in this forum um, going forward. Um, and so I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I did want to just say, you know, we hear you. Um, you know, we are committed to continuing to work with the community, work with everyone on, on the call this morning um, to try and address these um, in thoughtful ways and in ways that are beneficial to the community. So I wanted to put that out there. Um, but then we have, a, again, a pretty full agenda. We have uh, Dion Bo with us this morning from Main Street America, um, who's going to be um, partnering with us um, in Invest Southwest. And so I want to give her some time to kind of present um, what, what her shop does and, and how it um, sort of um, works in Invest Southwest and how they'll be working with us going forward. So Dion, um, are you on the call? I am. Hey, Nolan, thank you so much for inviting me. Of course. And just let me know when you need me to advance the slides. Sure. You can go ahead and advance the slide now. Next slide. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so really glad to see the recap um, does cover a lot of principles that the National Main Street Center covers as a part of our work when we um, lead uh, commercial corridor revitalization with communities. Um, just so you guys can know a little bit more about us, if you're not as familiar, the National Main Street Center is a national leader in economic development. We've been doing this for over 40 years. Um, <clears throat> we've really helped build more sustainable and equitable, equitable communities by lifting up the people and the places that make the main streets. So really the key ingredient to any successful main street program are many of the things that you guys noted in the recap. Community involvement, communities understanding what is going on, also being at the forefront of developing what projects should look like and how they are involved with the project process. Next slide, please. We were created back in 1980, so this is just a really quick overview um, to combat the harmful impacts of sprawl. As you all may know, who's been working in economic development for a number of years, commercial corridors go through various cycles. And in the 80s, um, commercial corridors were not seen as that neighborhood place that a lot of folks were going to. They were now starting to go to malls or big box stores, not saying that malls were just created in the 80s, 
but they did, you know, this was a cycle where folks were really um, going to the malls and, and big box stores to get most of their um, goods and services. Today, we see that our main street, and that's the reason that we were created. Um, today that we, we serve our main streets in both rural and urban communities, Main Street America has been very well known in smaller towns, um, but we do have a number of urban communities that have been working with us for over 30 years. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the slide deck. We're currently working in over 1,200 communities in 45 states, so we are a national organization, and the program has served more than 2,000 communities since its inception. Um, we are headquartered in Chicago, um, and Main Street America in urban Maine um, yeah, became its own 501c3 about seven years ago. Um, we were initially a program of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. The trust is our parent company, but we have our own board of directors. We do all of our own funding, and that has been um, since the past seven years. Next slide. These are our two signature programs, Main Street America and Urban Maine. Next slide. And, and before I go too much into the impact, I was hired about four and a half years ago to really in, ex, expand our work in urban commercial corridors. Um, I know many of you from my work in Chicago, being at the city of Chicago for a number of years, and then List Chicago, and then just the past four and a half years at the National Main Street Center. So I was professionally raised here, know many of the neighborhoods, and have worked with many of the individuals on the phone today. Um, you know, I could talk a lot about Main Street, but the impact I think is what matters. Um, it's so much. So since 1980, we have seen every program that has a Main Street, they have seen $79 billion reinvested into their communities. Um, just in 20, uh, 2018, there was $4.39 billion reinvested back into the communities. And when we say reinvested back into the communities, we're looking at both public and private investment. We see that often, you know, governments that we're working with, as well as private organizations and philanthropic groups really want to work with a community that has a great group of people that they're working with, that they have an identified manager and an organization that they can count on when they're trying to invest in a community and really depend on knowing the local knowledge of the community. Um, since 1980, there have been over 640,000 jobs that have been created, um, 143,000 net new businesses, as well as 284,000 buildings renovated. And we, we capture these statistics because this really tells us, you know, how well are our communities doing? What more can we do to assist them? So this is something that we've been capturing since 1980, and we will plan to capture the same type of data as a part of the Invest Southwest work. Next slide. So Main Street is known for its four points, for those of you that may be familiar. Economic vitality, which is really understanding how to build a diverse, uh, I would say, economic base. And when we talk about that, what are the incentives that are made available to your existing small businesses? What are the types of businesses that should be recruited to the community that are complementary to the existing businesses? What are the supports that you're providing to your existing entrepreneurs right now? Um, as well as the ecosystem. Like, where do people go when they need help? And is it very, you know, is it streamlined for them? And that they, you know, we really work with communities to do that. Um, design, you know, you guys talked about green space. So really creating an inviting, inclusive atmosphere that may include green space, but it also may include, include celebrating your historic buildings, also celebrating the historic culture of the neighborhood, um, fostering accessible people-centered places. It's really just ensuring that the design of the commercial corridor is welcoming, the sidewalks are large, large enough, the infrastructure makes it available for cars to drive down, but also for people to bike on the corridor. Those are things that we're looking at when we talk about design. Or, excuse me, organization is really building a leadership and a strong organizational capacity. Ensuring that the number of partners that are working to provide support to the businesses as well as the residents are a part of this process, and they're all working together on the same page. Promotion is marketing the district's image and the businesses. So really ensuring that the, the businesses that are on the district are being promoted. People know about them, but people know about your place and marketing the image of that district, supporting by local experiences as well as storytelling. Next slide. Next slide. 
So I'll share a little bit with you about main streets of work in urban neighborhoods that we've been working with in the past. Um, we have uh, main street programs in the District of Columbia, where there are 26 main street programs there. Um, Baltimore, there are nine. Orlando, I believe they have 10, um, as well as Boston. Boston is our longest running urban main program, um, urban main street program, where they have over 20 main streets. Next slide. And the, the, case, the case study that I will show you today is about Boston. Next slide. So Boston became a Main Street program in 1995, and the then mayor, um, Menino, really liked the four-point approach and essentially established his cabinet that way, um, where you know most of his city departments were looked very similar to our four points organization, economic, um, economic vitality, design and promotion. And so it was something that was really institutionalized at the city level. And each you know, uh, subsequent mayor has continued the Main Street programming and has made certain that it was um, getting the support, support that it needed. Um, since this inception of this program, there have been 1,394 new businesses launched with over 88,000 new jobs. Um, 373 hours of volunteer time. I stopped there because, again, this is a community-driven grassroots program where we really want to ensure that the community is a part of this work, not only volunteering at events, but also volunteering their time as boards of directors, volunteering their time on, on committees. Um, and that does turn into dollars. So, you know, from 373,000 hour, hours of volunteer time, that value was $6.3 million. And I would always suggest communities track their number of volunteer hours. And as we get more into this work, I will show you and showcase how you can do that because that's real value that's being inputted into the community. Pre-COVID, a lot of these numbers are pre-COVID, storefront occupancy was 95%, um, just utilizing the Main Street program. And this was all over the city in various different parts of the city. Um, in 2008, nearly 500 Main Street events were created to stimulate local businesses and community pride. So again, there, these festivals were not, you know, um, put on in silo without working in, in, in collaboration with the local businesses. So as we were bringing new foot, or as communities were bringing foot traffic to um, the community by hosting festivals, they also wanted to make sure that their businesses were a part of this. Um, and direct assistance over 2,000 uh, businesses in 2018 alone. Next slide. Next slide. So we've been working in Chicago. So prior to Invest Southwest, we were able to get some funding um, through the Driehaus Foundation as well as Groupon to, prove, to actually test the model in a few communities in Chicago. Um, we started our work on 51st Street and the 51st Street with the 51st Street Business Association, um, 71st Street in, in South Shore, as well as Bort, uh, Beverly Morgan Park neighborhood. Um, the services included an 18-month en engagement with these local communities to really understand their business mix. I provided a trade area analysis for each one of them. Um, conducted neighborhood attitude surveys. And so again, each survey that we are that we complete for communities are customized to make sure that those are customizable for the community and we're capturing information the community would like to know about. Um, we did a staff capacity analysis to really understand can the staff really lead this work or did they need additional support and assistance from funders to move forward um, and provided operational recommendations to them. Um, I've provided funding analysis as well as partnership development for each one of these corridors and connected them to partnership opportunities as well as transformation strategy development. And each one of um, the Invest Southwest corridors will receive this type of information, will receive this type of service from Urban Maine. Um, but the transformation strategy development piece I think is very important because that's a report that I provide back. And it really highlights where, what you're doing very, very well already. What's your business cluster right now? Where can we grow? And look at areas that you can build on in the future, but really want to find something that you can begin to develop within the next, within one year. So you can actually start seeing some, um, I would say, tangible on the ground resources or, or quick wins very quickly. Next slide. We're also working in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, that was funded through the Knight Foundation in the city of Charlotte. 
Um, again, this was a 2018 partnership that kicked off um, in the Beatty's Fort LaSalle corridor. Um, it's a traditionally African-American community where um, they, the city, I would say, did a fantastic job um, with the city of Charlotte to really ensure that community engagement was being led by the, by the community, that the community was at the forefront of, this, of the table of moving forward this work. We, we spent a lot of time building the capacity of local community residents, so we were all speaking the same language. I never want this opportunity to be a consultant coming in. I'm speaking these terms that folks don't understand. At the end of my engagement with each community, I want to walk away and ensure that you can read market data analysis as well as I can. You can have a conversation with an economic development consultant that's coming in or a developer that's coming in. And we were able to do that in Charlotte. Now we're moving forward to the next stage to really work with this community on small scale development um, as they are really trying to put more community wealth back in the hands of, of the communities that, that the community members that reside there, as well as property in the hands of community residents. Next slide. This is also a district um, that I worked in in Birmingham, Alabama, it's the Woodlawn District. Um, this was a partnership with our coordinating program. So in some places I may have a coordinating program that I can partner with um, in Main Street, Alabama um, is our coordinating program in Alabama. And REV Birmingham happened to be an economic development entity that essentially works with all of the neighborhood commercial corridors around Birmingham. And we really worked closely with them to um, build equitable entrepreneurship. The Woodlawn community had a number of housing that was coming into the community, however, not entrepreneurship opportunities. So they wanted to make certain that as new entrepreneurs were coming into the community um, or entrepreneurs were being sourced from the community and it was in an equitable way. Um, next slide. Next slide. So for Invest Southwest services that will be provided um, through um, Urban Main and Main Street America, the first thing that we will do is provide workshops. Main Street 101. I can talk about Main Street, but if you don't know what the four points are, how to inc incorporate these four points into the work, it's as if I'm just speaking another language. So Main Street 101 to teach people the fundamentals, um, community asset mapping, engagement and partnership building, many things that you may have done already, but ensuring that we're pulling that all together in one place and that everyone is on the same page. Organization board training, um, roles and responsibilities. So if you are managing a Main Street program, there are certain things that we want your board to understand. We really want them to be a part of this work. We really wanna ensure that this is a working board and it's not a board that just shows up, but they're working to really help move forward the Main Street efforts, volunteer recruitment and retention. And we talk about, you know, what are some of the celebrations? You may have been doing these things already, but you wanna acknowledge your volunteers. You wanna always say thank you. Um, resource development and fundraising, as well as business recruitment and retention strategies. Um, you know, as you see the two columns that are to the right of the um, services that I noted, um, we really just want to spend our time building the capacity of the local community, um, all interested stakeholders, businesses, property owners, residents that want to understand the fundamentals. So these trainings will may, be made open and available to those stakeholders property development training, development one-on-one. These are just some of the things that we're interested in, but when we start really diving into the work, we will develop and, and customize the workshops that will best fit the needs of the community. And these are just some of the training partners that we can bring to bear as a part of this work. I think there is, this may be the last slide, but one more slide, yes. Um, so this is a pretty old slide um, deck because I presented to a lot of the other roundtables um, earlier in 2020. But from what I've heard on all of the roundtables that I've participated in, the program objectives, and what I've heard from the city, um, is it's about economic diversification. It's about job creation, capital, capital investment, excuse me, and workforce development. Those are the objectives of this program. And we really wanna be able to get to those objectives by understanding how many businesses have been improved, how many businesses have been served, number of new leases created. And so many, you know, so the corridor manager has been identified. We are working, the National Main Street Center is working very in close collaboration with List Chicago as we have developed um, the outcomes and objectives together to ensure that we're all on the same page. 
Um, we all have scheduled one-to-ones with the corridor managers, so there will just be more information to further explain how we will continue to work with the community. But we wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit more about Mainstream America, um, the work we lead, where we've led this work, and the breadth and the depth of our work. I'll stop there and allow for questions if folks have questions. So there is a question from Angie. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to read that off to Anya. So Angie asks, you know, thanks for the presentation. I'm wondering what the capacity is on the part of Main Street America to fully engage a Spanish speaking population, both residents and Absolutely. small business owners. That's such a great question. And um, I, I think I'm joined by my colleague, Gustavo Usteras, who's on the line. Um, and we, we, we have Spanish speaking individuals on our team um, that can definitely help us in those communities. Gustavo and I are on the urban main team. So, you know, we will divide and conquer and ensure that, you know, where there is need for translation services or Spanish speaking services, we will have, we have that on staff already. Any additional questions? Uh, I see Jesse Iniguez has raised his hand. Jesse, go ahead. Yes, thanks. Um, no, I, I just had a question in regards to the community engagement. I noticed mm -hmm. in some of these other cities and in, in, uh, projects, uh, one of the biggest parts has been the community engagement. And I'm just wondering how is that going to be, um, how is it going to be handled? Um, you know, we've had uh, various versions of community engagement in the neighborhood throughout the years. Um, and some were is real intentional and intent and work. Yeah. Others, other times I've been just, we'll have a community meeting and the community's engaged. So just wondering how, how that's going to be managed and by who. Great question. Well, we, real, we will rely heavily on the corridor manager who is back at the Yards Neighborhood Council as, as, as the partner to go to. Um, to me, real community engagement and all my work has really been in organizing um, since I left the city of Chicago, let me just say that. Since I left the city of Chicago, most of my work was um, truly to ensure that anything that is brought to bear in a community was worked through with the community. If we need to stall the process to ensure that we get more people involved at the community level, that is our hope. Um, that is our desire. We know that any Main Street program that is not institutionalized at the community level is not successful. And that's just honest. If the communities don't buy into this process and they don't buy into the methodology, it, it, it just will not be successful. And we cannot work with five of the same people that keep showing up to the meetings all the time. We need to expand this out to people who have not been a part of the process and who are very interested in being a part of the process. So I just will let you know, that's our methodology. That's, that's our principle that we stand by. And we want to make certain that we are deferring to the community all the time to ensure if we're getting something wrong, if we need to make adjustments and changing changes, we will do that on the spot. I hope that answers your question, Jesse. Yes, thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, seeing and hearing none, um, we're gonna go ahead and continue to move forward. We'll certainly have more opportunity. Um, I'm sure Dion will be joining us again in the future. Um, so we'll have more chances and we'll also have some time at the end of this meeting. So um, thank you, Dion. Um, thank you, Nolan. And, and here's her information. Um, if you guys um, wanna take it down, I'll leave it up on the screen for a minute. This is also being recorded. So you'll be able to go back um, and access this in the future. Um, so moving on, um, we do want to move to um, DCASE initiatives. So we do have Lydia, um, I believe Lydia Ross from the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events with us to talk a little bit about um, some of their initiatives um, that they'll be launching in 2021. Lydia? Oh, sorry, I'm muted. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Nolan and Sonia. Hello, everyone on the round table. It's always a pleasure to join these conversations. Um, I know there's some folks who were at the community engagement session Tuesday. So uh, thanks for bearing with me as I share the same information um, with you again and some new folks. Uh, 
I also want to just make a shout out and hello to Fernando Ramirez and Ali Harwood from Project Onward. Um, those of you who have been part of previous roundtable discussions will know that uh, DCASE in partnership with DPD led a selection process um, with community panelists to identify uh, Fernando Ramirez and Project Onward as the new city back of the yards artists in residence. So um, you had an opportunity if you joined us in December to meet Fernando. Um, I'm going to be talking about a different project today, but just wanted to say that this is really the start to a lot of different points of engagement with DCASE, um, with Fernando and Ali, and we're really looking forward to shaping um, public art visions and dreams and some specific projects in partnership with all of you in the months ahead. Um, today, I'm here to present a little bit of an overview of a new public art project uh, that's also part of Invest Southwest and make a plug for um, ways that we are really hoping for your thoughts and participation in shaping our design. So Nolan, I'm hoping you have my slides if you can progress to the next one. Great, and next. All right, so as I mentioned, um, DCASE is engaged with um, a number of of potential projects and different forms of community engagement in shaping the public art that you all want to see in your neighborhood. So please stay tuned as we work with Fernando and Ali to start planning some more engagement opportunities to really hear more about general visions, goals, and opportunities. Um, we also have the opportunity, again, in partnership with DPD to create a, a public art project and a lighting installation under the 49th and Ashland Viaduct. Um, we are aware that there is already a vibrant set of uh, murals and street art along 49th Street. Uh, we are specifically looking at uh, illuminating the viaduct or as we're calling it, creating a mural in light um, under the viaduct passageway. So um, we have a few goals which are on a very practical level to improve kind of just the experience and look and feel of that site. Um, and we are also hoping with your input and vision to make this a real sense of gathering, to create a sense of place and celebration at this part in the neighborhood. Um, we have engaged a local artist team, uh, Sean Gallardo and Petra Bachmeyer who are longtime Chicago residents. Uh, they go by Luftwerk as their team and they are kind of Chicago's art experts in large scale lighting and infrastructure projects. So if you can go to the next slide, Nolan, um, I'm just gonna scroll through a couple images if anyone isn't familiar with the site. Uh, next. Next. And next. So uh, just to give you a quick glimpse at a few of Sean and Petra's works, um, they have been uh, doing projects with the city, uh, including these few images that I have from the 606 to really transform infrastructure and specifically bridges, bridges into really dynamic public art projects using light. So if you go to the next slide, um, these are two different views of different large scale installations they did on the 606. Um, I've included the link to their website, liftwork.net, if you want to get to know them a little bit more. They've also done incredible installations at Millennium Park, at the Garfield Park Conservatory, and they're really excited to lend their expertise to this project. Um, but most importantly, we're getting the ball rolling on connecting them to all of you to help inform and inspire what their designs actually look like. Uh, next slide, please. So a brief timeline. Uh, this month and next month, we're going to be working with the artists and all of you to really shape kind of what is the concept? What do we want to see? We have a canvas of this viaduct. Um, we know that the kind of main medium is installing different light features, um, but we also have the opportunity to incorporate images, patterns, and understand kind of what people want to see here. 
So there's a conceptual design development. So kind of how do we get the ball rolling on an artistic vision? And then there'll be additional opportunities for refinement, feedback. So we get to a place where people feel really proud, happy, and aware of what the artists are actually going to be creating. Um, and the goal is to move through that phase, kind of February through April, and ultimately install this piece in the fall, when hopefully we will all be able to celebrate together in person. Uh, next slide, please, Nolan. So some of you, or hopefully all of you, if you haven't already uh, following this meeting, will get a flyer. Um, we've created, uh, as I think Dion said, it's a little bit uh, challenging when we can't do community engagement in person. Um, but the artists have developed three questions. Um, I also want to take a beat to shout out uh, Alderwoman Taylor. She has been an incredible partner in supporting this project and also helping us um, shape these questions and our community engagement. So there's three questions just to get the ball rolling that we're really eager to get your feedback on. Um, these questions uh, you can respond to in a number of ways. We've set up a phone number that you can text or call and leave a voicemail to answer these questions or offer any other insights that we should know about this particular location. Um, there's also a Google form. Uh, you can fill out the questions as a survey. Um, you can also join a community forum on Monday, January 25th from 5 to 6 p.m. Um, I will also pop the, just the straight meeting ID and dial in information in the chat. Uh, if you would like to receive the actual calendar invitation, um, I will be on the call. Please just message me uh, or send me your email and I will make sure you get all of the details. Um, if you can go to the next slide. This is just the side by side of the flyer. Um, my last slide was in English, but I want to assure you that the flyer um, and all of the ways that you can access uh, different portals to give us your feedback um, are translated into English and Spanish. So the survey is available in both languages, as is the directive if you call the number. Um, we will also have a translator on hand um, Monday uh, at our forum. So we really wanna make sure that we're making this, um, this call out for feedback as accessible as possible. Um, if you have thoughts of other folks who might not be on this call that you think we should reach out to, um, again, please message me. I'll put my email in the chat along with the Zoom meeting ID. Um, and as I mentioned, this conversation Monday and this initial survey is really just getting the ball rolling. This is gonna be a collaborative process so that by the time we gather to celebrate in October, um, the community really feels good and excited to celebrate a beautiful new work of public art. So thank you so much for giving me some time and uh, happy to answer questions. Thank you, Lydia. Yeah, I see uh, we have two hands raised. Uh, the first one that went up was Randall Hunt. Randall? Good morning. Hey, Lydia. Uh, hey. I, have, I have a question. Um, I'm kind of familiar with some of the work that they've done. Well, I mm -hmm. recognize some of those, well, all of those, the photos that you've shown. Mm -hmm with a piece of architectural art that they're possibly going to uh, create within the neighborhood and in that location specifically, it would be kind of impressive. So are there plans to build up to that piece of artwork, i.e from I, I'm assuming just about 42nd Street all the way up to Ashland to build up to it. I'm assuming it's going to be impressive and I, I, I would just, I'm, I'm not getting it in my head if you're just driving down the street and then bam all of a sudden, <laughs> right. you know, here's this impressive piece like, oh, where'd that come from? As opposed to smaller pieces or injections all leading up to it throughout that corridor to yeah. say, ah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Randall. Um, we've received funding specifically for this site. So for the purposes of, um, yeah, so to answer your question, right now we are focused on this particular site. 
Um, but as I mentioned, we also have Fernando Ramirez with the partnership for Project Onward on the call. Um, DCASE is really here as a partner in helping envision um, a bigger picture for public art in the neighborhood. So I think you make a great point in how do we really go into this project with an eye towards making this feel connected or maybe even laying the groundwork for other artwork that, you know, yeah, is more unified to your point. So I think there's room for both. Um, and I think, you know, I would love to have you at the meeting and we'll be sure to capture, um, you know, these questions that we're asking, I think will have implications to inform public art beyond just the viaduct. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, well, even if it's not artistic um, per se, even if there's just like a sidewalk lighting mm -hmm. down the corridor for, you know, a certain length or whatever to, because an art piece like I've seen of their work is not necessarily just to enjoy by driving by. Right. You know, you walking and you're looking at it and kind of absorbing it as, as you see it. So I'm assuming that the corridor, you're kind of like wanting to build it out as a walkable space, so to speak. Yes. You know, where people can stroll or families can stroll up and down and just feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. So. It, it if I can jump in, um, yeah, so I think, you know, we have been, see that has already been involved um, in sort of preparing um, the viaduct for this project. Um, but we've also been having conversations with CDOT around kind of a, a larger streetscaping initiative along these corridors that would do exactly what you're kind of speaking to, Randall, okay. you know, um, address the sidewalks and kind of pedestrian um, amenities and, and that experience. And so I think there's there's very much an opportunity um, this year to kind of work with CDOT, work with DCASE to vision for, you know, sort of a gateway, um, you know, or using this art project as a gateway into the broader community, but, but connecting um, the, the viaduct to, um, you know, kind of 47th and Ashland. Way cool. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Randall. Hope you can join us on Monday. Um, and I, I see there was a comment from Jesse in the chat. Uh, Nolan, I guess this is for both of us. Um, I think, you know, to what Nolan just shared. Um, yes, the public art project itself is part of a larger Invest Southwest investment in cleaning up the viaduct, dealing with structural damage and making sure that we have a safe, a safe space that is structurally sound to then go install artwork on. That's right. So I see uh, Craig Chico also has his hand raised. Craig? Hi, Nolan. Hi, Lydia. Hey. Hey. My question is similar to um, uh, the one we just heard. And it was really kind of, is there an, now again, I'm not an artist, but is there an opportunity to do some messaging with this and or identification so that we could start branding our community a little bit from a, a geographic standpoint? Now, I know this isn't the type of art we're talking about, but given that it's a uh, holistic approach, we're coming at this with maybe Nolan, and I don't mean to speak for you guys and, and give you more work, but we could find monies like you just mentioned, D, uh, CDOT and others that could um, find some additional re resources to do some messaging and some branding and, so, and create a different perspective and through a geographic uh, demarcation. And that said, can we also start talking about including the, the Viaduct at 42nd Street? And then maybe we can figure out a way to start talking about 47th Street, 42nd and Ashland. And then the viaducts that unfortunately seem to uh, are the boundaries for our community to a certain extent. And I know there's some some type of um, art in those areas now, I think. Um, but I'm hoping that we can incorporate maybe this concept with some messaging and with some perspectives and, and, and geography for, for, um, for branding our community. Just a thought. Yeah, I think that's, Nolan, you may be better positioned to answer that question. I mean, we, again, we we have received funding specifically to do um, this large scale lighting project on this viaduct, but I think we we absolutely, and it's, you know, part of the partnership with Fernando and Ali is really thinking about a more holistic approach. Um, so how do we create artwork that does start to create a sense of branding or identity and something that can be built on? Um, so I, I think there's room for all of that. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, I think we would be, we would certainly be open to exploring that going forward. 
Um, and I see Maria asked if um, back of the yards artists are involved. Um, for this project, in terms of the lead artists, um, Luftwerk are not back of the yards based. Um, they are longtime Chicago residents, but it's why we're kind of going into a multi pronged community engagement approach um, so that these artists can really be informed by the creative community as well as residents in the neighborhood. Um, Fernando Ramirez, who's our artist in residence, has been a um, almost lifelong back of the yards native. Great. And then we're getting some some good comments in the chat too around just how we might, you know, what other um, viaducts and gateways could use some attention in the neighborhood. Um, you know, looking at are there opportunities for a combined design for both bridges at 42nd and 49th Street? I think these are all things that we can certainly talk about. I think we need to look at, you know, kind of what resources are available to do that, but um, we're certainly open to having that conversation um, and doing that research. So um, are there any other comments or questions before we move on? Um, I will just reiterate, uh... I will go, I will recede into the background, but provide my email address, uh, the Zoom meeting ID, um, and Nolan and Sonia, I will kindly ask you to circulate the, the flyer that is in English and Spanish so folks can um, RSVP or just go directly and start leaving us some feedback. Uh, thanks so much for the really thoughtful questions and, and for your time. Great, thank you, Lydia. And yeah, we did, I believe Sonia sent this out yesterday um, after our Tuesday night session, but we'll make sure anyone who is at the meeting today, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of just do a, a reconcile and make sure that anyone who hasn't received it, um, we'll get that out to them. So for the remaining sort of 15 minutes that we have today, um, I, I put on the agenda, just agenda setting. And I think, you know, we have, the idea is we have, we have two more neighborhood roundtables before um, proposals come in um, for the, the RFP that we released uh, back on November 30th. Um, and so I think, you know, our, our thoughts all along was that we would take those, these next two neighborhood roundtables as an opportunity um, just to do some prioritization um, and talk about, you know, what sort of projects should we be working towards in 2021, in addition to the ones that we're already rolling out. Um, but, you know, after the conversation Tuesday night, um, I just, I want to give just some space um, for, for folks to share their thoughts and ideas um, around, you know, what sort of things we should be talking about in the next two roundtables, what priorities we should have, you know, whether that's, you know, what I just mentioned, us just taking the time um, to start to prioritize and talk about projects, or if there are other priorities that we really should be talking about and resolving. Um, I just want to give some space for everyone on the call to to have that conversation and share their thoughts. So um, no pressure, but uh, I'm gonna turn it over to the group. Well, I, I'll say a little bit, I haven't, I haven't spoken a lot, Nolan, but I really appreciated the opportunity to have those community roundtables, And I think it's a learning process. I've watched them develop uh, over the time. I think, I think Spanish translation is important in those things and almost to lead in Spanish in some ways uh, because residents do talk afterwards and they're, you know, they, there's a mix of feelings about, you know, getting some input in, but I, I think, I think they're excited to be a part of it, to be honest. And, and I'm grateful for that. Um, the second part of it is, is, um, you know, th there's the high interest in, in developing 47th street, uh, as a, a corridor of, of the small businesses, you know, and, and just highlighting that interest. And I know, I know we're doing that, but I would just reiterate that that uh, I think that's going to remain a priority, um, and I know 51st Street continues to talk, and I I, I don't want to leave that out of the question at all along along the discussion, and finally uh, keeping the library in there in the discussion somewhere as a as a highlight. I think it's it's got a it's going to be one of those priorities. It is one of those priorities, and a lot of residents asked about that, um, knowing that that uh, the money that Teresa Ma got is there, and you know wanting to know how that's developing and, and, you know, strategically thinking about it. So I just mentioned those three things. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Bruce. And, and yeah, just to respond to some of those, you know, we, we certainly heard you after Tuesday night, I think, you know, we're talking internally about um, securing some professional translation services. 
um, going forward. I'm not sure if we'll be able to offer that at, you know, at every single roundtable, but certainly when we do these larger engagement sessions like the one we did Tuesday night or the visioning uh, workshops that we did last October, um, we'll make sure that those are bilingual. Um, definitely hear you on the importance of small business development. I think that's also something that we continue to, to want to advance. And, and I was, I'm was i glad that, that Dion Bo from Main Street America was able to join us this morning because I think they're going to be really pivotal in helping us to move that forward. Um, and then we absolutely are going to go back to the library, uh, to Chicago Public Libraries and, and, and convey the interest um, from the community in being involved in um, the process. Um, and, and certainly, I think, you know, we've already made the offer to them that, you know, these neighborhood roundtables and these Invest Southwest engagement sessions, you know, they are certainly welcome to join um, and use this as a forum as well. And so we're gonna, um, I think, reiterate that offer to them. Um, Jesse, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I just, uh, thank you, Nolan. Um, I just wanted to stress that, that, I th that th the community, I think, as a whole, um, no, so you're breaking up just a little bit, Jesse. Folks, I want to see who had improved. And I, I just, I just moved from location. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so I was saying that uh, basically the, the, I think the community as a whole um, wants to see the neighborhood improve and look better. But I think you know there's there's palpable fear of gentrification. Um, you know when when we talk about neighborhood improvement, whether it's real or perceived. Um, and I think just, you know, I, I say that just so that we're sensitive uh, to, to, the, to that fear and, and that we were able to address that early on. And, and obviously one of the ways, uh, one of the biggest ways is community engagement, right? And, but, but it has to be uh, intentional and in making sure that we're not just engaging folks just to say we are, but that we're engaging them and really taking their, um, their issues and the considerations uh, seriously. And I think, um, you know, I, I really like some of the, the proposals that have been uh, been out there with, you know, the expansion of the sidewalks, you know, obviously that the 49th uh, viaduct is, has been an eyesore and, you know, structurally unsound for some time. So I'm glad that, that it's been addressed. Um, and, and, and I don't think anybody in the community would be against that, but, but just, you know, being sensitive to, to the concerns, it's gonna be huge. Uh, for the support and making sure that that we're uh, including uh, not only neighborhood uh, businesses uh, but also neighborhood residents uh, to be part of this improvement as well. So, I, I, so I want to thank you for 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 these engagements and and I hope that we continue to 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 do this. And I know it's challenging with the um, you know with the pandemic and having to do this uh, virtually, but. But um, I mean, there's a lot of really good families, really good people in the community, and and uh, you know, I'd hate to put that fear in them that that they're going to be pushed out. So just wanted to, um, you know, mention that. Yeah, thank you, Jesse. Yeah, and and, and admittedly, I am. This is I, I am not used to conducting engagement over Zoom. I I would much rather be, you know, in person, um, having large gatherings and and in the community. So this is this has been a challenge for us too. I think. Um, but yeah, definitely hear you. I mean, I think we need to be continue to be sensitive about these concerns around gentrification and displacement, around taxes going up. I think again, I'm glad that that, that Dion is joining us because um, I think she's going to help us with. You know, we talk about community wealth building um, and making sure that that what happens in the community is for the community. And so, you know, I think that's very important. And, and I do think you know we want this to this engagement to be real, uh, not a rubber stamp. I mean, we may not always reach consensus, but we certainly want to hear, hear you and, and, and adjust accordingly. So um, thank you for those comments. Um, I'm gonna go to, uh, in chat, um, yeah, Angie made a comment. Sorry, I'm just reading agenda setting. I think we need to figure out how to go back and forth with meetings available to residents, more evening meetings, a definite need for Span Spanish language participation, et cetera. Um, we definitely agree with you there. I think we need to look at how we can adjust um, adjust the meeting schedule um, and also make sure that that those translation um, services are available. Um, and then I see uh, Araceli, Dion mentioned a case study and reviewing one. Have we decided on a month yet where we will review one? Um, Dion, are you still with us? Can you speak to that? Yes, I am still here, I'm sorry. Um, 
I reviewed the case study earlier today, Araceli, and that was the Boston case study. Um, but definitely as we go into planning of the workshops, um, that will be something that we will work out with the corridor manager. And so if you guys really want to dive in a little bit deeper um, in other communities that we're working in, I can definitely prepare that for one of our workshops. We just have not decided on when the workshops will, get, will begin, when the classes will begin. That schedule hasn't been developed yet. Yeah, and thank you for answering my question. I was just curious because I think some of the terms went a little over my head. So I think a case study would be really helpful for me to really, you know, hone in on those terms. So I, I think that would be really yes. helpful. No, Arasali, Arasali, you're absolutely right. I can talk about this Main Street work, um, but until we start actually diving into the workshops, I, I know that it's going over folks heads. So no, I'm glad that you said something and mentioned it. I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Uh, Randall, you have your hand raised. Uh, yeah. Um, for Jesse, uh, a lot of your comment kind of froze up on the screen, either mine or yours. Uh, but I, I'm think I did catch, I think the gist of it as far as uh, regentrification. Um, and the concern possibly from the residents of that. And for that, I, I use a big example and I use it many and many a times and I have for years. If you look at 26th street between say California and let's cut it down to Pulaski or Cicero just about past Pulaski how many big box stores are along that corridor? I haven't been there lately, but I know at one time when a lot of these uh, stats were taken, there were probably four or five big box stores, including a Walgreens, a McDonald's, and I think Foot Locker and somebody else for that whole corridor. The majority of the uh, storefronts in there were mom and pop stores or restaurants. Right. Per capita of the dollar at one point, wrap your head around this, 26th Street killed Michigan Avenue. Michigan Avenue, wrap your head around that. 26th Street beat the crap out of Michigan Avenue with mom and pop stores. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more so an understanding of where, what regentrification is, how it can at some point be controlled. That's why we have a council. That's why we have these projects because they can step in and say, you know what? No, we don't need a Macy's coming in into the neighborhood. We have five different mom and pop stores that kind of cover everything that Macy's is gonna do. So we don't need a Macy's coming in. Not to say that it's a bad thing necessarily or a good thing. I'm just saying there can be some type of control for that. And when the residents think of regentrification, if they're scared that, oh, all of this is gonna change or all of that's gonna change, change is inevitable. It's just how it's changing. And if it's gonna support the neighborhood versus demolish the neighborhood. And I think a lot of these forums are kind of on the road of supporting the neighborhood. Just my two cents. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Randall. And yeah, I think, you know, Invest Southwest is committed to supporting and growing local businesses and supporting local entrepreneurs. And there's already, you know, a rich and vibrant kind of local business culture in back of the yards. And I think we're looking to support that. Other thoughts? Hello, everybody. I'm Erika here. Um, I just want to, yes, um, say that, you know, I think that um, this, this conversation, this presentation today focuses much more on small businesses, small business development um, of those that are already here. Uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic, very much so, going into the second year. And so, um, 
I think that that is the need that we are facing, continuing to support businesses that were already not um, resourced, you know, um, so well-resourced, well-managed, or whatever you want to say, uh, because it's an area that hasn't been invested in, okay? So I do think that hearing this and how we're investing in the Southwest and how we're creating a market for residents in the Southwest to invest into their business, to get their needs met, needs met here, I think that is a conversation that I will be in support of because I think it's necessary to center the community. Uh, what are our needs, right? Um, again, you know, Investment can be very tricky. Uh, it just has been accelerated in the past few years on where to make profit easily. And so I think that for me, it's not profit, it's people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I just really, really want to you know, recognize this. The subject here is small businesses that will allow us to continue to live here. Um, because, well, yes, the business will meet our needs and we'll support them as well. So um, I'm rambling now, but I just really think that it's so important uh, that this is where we're focusing on and it's not an easy job. And so thank you, Diane, D Diane for being here. I think that, you know, um, you know that, that you're being here and just saying that you have people that also speak the language, you know, that uh, while we're not always perfect with our interpretation and translation, I think that it's still, you know, necessary. So focusing on that and Bruce mentioned and Angie, you know, does as well. Um, I feel very comfortable in these, you know, conversations because I have the skills to, you know, listen and communicate, but most of my community neighbors do not. And so like, then you leave it upon us to like inform everybody, which I, you know, I think is like, you know, if you see yourself as a member of the community, you're going to, but who was supposed to do the work for the community, you know? Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, America. We hear you loud and clear. And I will mention, so Dion in the chat did say, remember Main Street, uh, the Main Street focus is on supporting the small businesses in the community and record, recruiting local entrepreneurs that live and operate in the community. Um, and I'll, I'll also say, and I, I see uh, Jim Harbin from our team is on the call. I don't want to put him on the spot, um, but if he wants to add anything, I will say that, um, you know, we have sort of retooled and, and refocused our our programs like Neighborhood Opportunity Fund and other resource programs um, to really prioritize um, local businesses and these commercial corridors. Um, Jim, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, that certainly has been our focus, you know, last year, you know, really kind of just threw things up in the air, if you will, and, you know, really had us circling back internally to decide, you know, where the priority should be based on, you know, literally the country and the planet going through a pandemic and how do we support small businesses. So yeah, our NOF program has been enhanced. Our small business improvement fund has been enhanced. You know, we also have uh, services now where we uh, provide uh, info sessions entirely in, in Spanish to make sure that there's a broader reach in terms of making sure people get connected to these resources. And we're still looking and to determine how we can tweak this. So, you know, bringing in organizations like Dion, you know, establishing a corridor manager, you know, these are all efforts in order to, to address these needs. And, and again, we hope that, you know, before the year is out uh, that we uncover even more. So um, yeah, just, just that certainly is the city's focus. And yeah, we are open to hearing ideas in terms of how to even do it better. Thanks, Jim. So, so we are at time. Um, I want to give folks if there if there's you know you know another quick comment or question. I do want to give space for that, but we are at time. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Okay. Um, but what I would say is, you know, I, we've seen a lot come up in the chat too. I think we hear you. We certainly hear you on translation um, and the need for you know um, materials and meetings to be bilingual. Um, we're going to work towards that. Um, certainly hear you on some of the priorities that we need to elevate and center in the conversation. Um, and so I think, you know, we will take um, what we heard today, what we heard Tuesday night, we'll put together an agenda for the February roundtable, which again is the, you know, the third Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Um, although we'll, I think we'll also start to look at, you know, what are some other times that we could um, have these types of meetings, um, whether that's in the evening, um, so that, that more folks can kind of get engaged and be involved who may not be able to during the workday. So 
Um, you know, oh, Claudia, jump in. Yes. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. Um, since I joined the PD team uh, about two months ago. Um, so I've been starting to um, go around into the round tables and starting to get to know the communities. My name is Claudia Erasme and I am originally from Dominican Republic um, and have been in New York for the last 21 years doing uh, planning work and urban design work um, and just moved to Chicago. Um, so I am, um, my role at the department is the managing deputy commissioner uh, for the planning and design team. So I look forward to working with you and um, I've been for now more in the background and you know, listening to the conversations, getting to know um, the communities and, and the work that we're doing together. So um, if you need to reach out to me, I'm, I'm open. Um, and um, I look forward to, to the work of uh, in 2021. Thank you, Claudia. I'm so sorry I didn't realize you were joining us this morning. Otherwise, I would have introduced you earlier. That's okay, because I had a I, I came in a little late because I had a, a a meeting overlap. But um, certainly wanted to come in and and uh, hear the discussion. All right. Well, with that, uh, I think I think we'll leave it there. Um, you know, look for. Uh, look for communication from either myself or Sonia in the next several days, um, just kind of teeing up the next neighborhood roundtable. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. All right, th thank you all for, for joining this morning and for your thoughts and, and ideas. Um, and uh, yeah, we will talk again soon. Have a good day. Thanks, Noah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.